Welcome to Creating Abundance, sharing inspirational stories from experts around the world. Tap into your inner wisdom at alanacahoon.com. Welcome to Creating Abundance. I'm Alana. I am delighted to welcome Christiani Asper Content. She's the founder of Wellbeing Compass and is here to talk to us about the ancient healing science of Ayurveda. Christiani is a clinical Ayurveda specialist trained at the California College of Ayurveda, which was founded by Dr. Mark Helpern. She's also a registered yoga teacher specializing in Ayurvedic yoga therapy and yoga nidra, and is the director at the in Assisi Institute of Yoga, where she and I met. Welcome, Christiani. Thank you, Alana, for having me and to all of you here. Considering so much pulling at your attention, uh, namaste. Namaste. It's wonderful to have you here on this beautiful, glorious, snowy day in New York State. <laughs> we can see that with your window. I'm looking out my window and the snow yeah. is falling gently. It's, it's beautiful. So, so sweet. Yeah. So according to the Ayurveda Institute, Ayurveda is an ancient healing science, and in Sanskrit, Ayurveda means the science of life. Ayurvedic knowledge originated in India more than 5,000 years ago and is often called the mother of all healing. I love that. I've never heard it described that way. So could you tell us in a nutshell, what is what does it even mean to you as a, as a specialist mm -hmm. in this field? Sure. So the root word, Ayur, living life. Okay. Veda, the sciences, the knowledge, the wisdom, right? So this is a way of living. And the mother, right? The mother is because Mother Earth holds up this whole container that is our lives, that sustains us through the five elements that we are, that nature is. And uh, what I see as Ayurveda, what Ayurveda has become for me over the years since I first discovered it, is that it is a roadmap for living in ease. Now, each of us have a different needs in terms of what it takes for living in ease. Each of us have a different constitution, a, a different combination of these five elements. And therefore- so What are they? What are the five elements? The five elements are prithi, which is earth, which, is, which gives us the sense of stability, of grounding, of, of, of being supported. And then have appas, which is water, which allows for fluidity, for for I mean you you can survive quite a quite some days without food, right? Without the earth moving through you, but only a few days without water. And then you have tejas or agni, which is fire. And that is that which gives you the capacity to transform in the body when digestion, when fire element is too high, that you will have things like acid reflux. Um, you will have loose stools. When the fire is too slow, you will have a sense of heaviness in the stomach, a sluggishness, a nausea, perhaps. Interesting. Um, be because there's just not enough to break down or not enough heat to assimilate yeah. and to, to process that food. When you have um, irregular agni, then you have the bloating or you have constipation. Mm -hmm. When the fire element is in its perfect harmony, you have no digestive symptoms. Yeah. And according to Ayurveda, although, although dis-ease, lack of ease begins in the mind, it is first manifested in the body. 
Really? So this is so interesting because fire, I'm always thinking about fire as, you know, a, an emotional uh, power, you know, too much fire means you're angry and you're red hot with anger and not enough fire means you're lazy and not doing things. So to, to put this into the physical body and it, what I'm hearing is it's really, uh, it's related to digestion. It manifests as digestion, but surely mind, it manifests exactly as you said, as yeah. these either very strong emotions or very dull emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we come to Vayu, which is the air element, which travels in our body in five different ways. When it's moving down, it's a pana Vayu, it's that air that grounds us. When it's moving from center to per, from from the center out to the periphery, it's the viana vayu, the 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 wind that inspires us, that lets us spread our wings. When it moves up and out, is what we're doing right now, communicating, exchanging uh, through udana vayu. Yeah. When it moves from the extremes into the center is an opportunity for assimilation, for connecting to, to, to your base. And then when it moves from up in, it's, a for, it's an opportunity for inspiration. So when these five winds, when the air is balanced in these five ways in the body, you have optimal health. Okay. There, if you have any questions about that. So, well, I was just thinking, so that, you know, five, five elements, five, five airs, which is kind of fun. Um, uh, and I'm going to backtrack just a moment. So the physical or the, the earth, the pretty was the earth, which sounds just as I'm hearing it, it sounds like, uh, when I think of the elements that the, um, the earth element relates to the physical body, maybe the, the bones, the structure, and then the water I mean, is is there yes, a rel is is there a relation with each of these elements like that in the physical body yeah absolutely so as you mentioned the bones right so so the earth element is the skeleton is that yeah. which gives us shape right it's the most dense most nutrient field aspect of our bodies as where water, well, water is the one that protects everything, right? It's it's surrounding each of our organs. We have about two thirds what's of what's in our body is made up of water. Yeah. Similarly, two thirds of of our Earth's water is our of our Earth is also made up of water. Yeah. So what? So. The saliva yeah. in your mouth. Right, yeah. The, 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 the tears that come out of your eye, uh, mucus, all of that is a, an expression of the water element. Okay, so we've got earth, water, fire, air, and what's the fifth one? So akash, ether, that is the most ethereal, the most challenging to grasp because you cannot see you cannot feel it but what what ether is is the formless element that contains the other form the other four okay and so when when closer to the earth element let's just say there's too much of the earth element in you, okay? Yeah. Then that container is going to be expressing that as lethargy, as the lack of desire to get out of the couch. When there is not enough earth, the mind starts to move too fast. And so there is anxiety, right? So then yeah. that container the ether will be expressing be expressed as nervousness uh difficulty falling asleep and yeah. so on. so so i like you know so often we think you know ether space therefore empty i don't like to see it that way because that doesn't feel real to me what what feels real to me is that ether is this container 
for all the other four elements. Whichever element is being expressed more at that time, then the ether, kind of like a mirror, is going to show you that. That's really beautiful. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. yeah. I like That's it so neat. That way. So I'm quite familiar with Ayurveda. And in fact, I have a book here that introduced me to Ayurveda. And this is good old Deepak Chopra and Perfect Health. Mm -hmm. And you can see I, I use I've used this for years. And uh and what stood out the most for me, not as a practitioner, um, but as a well, I practice it in my own life, but um was the doshas, the three mind-body types or uh energy bodies. So the five elements. Um, but those doshas that say that there is a body mind type that you most likely fall into, uh, and understanding each of these um, uh, body mind types will help you to then be healthier. Uh, so uh, I I've created quizzes for my my class, the body mind connection class, and this is by far one of the favorite topics of, of all of my students in the class. So um, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that, and then I want to really know why you ended up on this path. So let's yeah, hear it. So the, the, the thing about doshas is, is it's very exciting because it gives people a new language, a new opportunity to to identify themselves and it's one that's closer to their nature because it's related to the five elements hmm. kappa dosha even though a, a individual who is primarily kappa will have access to all of the five elements who have in their container everything that they need to restore balance they're primarily made out of earth and water. And for those reasons, the tendency towards the slower digestion that we talked about will yeah. be, for those reasons, the tendency towards uh, depression might be there. Mm -hmm. mm. Or, or the desire to accumulate things might be there. But also when they are in perfect balance, when they are, when they're earth and water elements are just in the right amounts, even though it will be more for them than, than other individuals who don't have the, the kappa as primary. They are the full uh, expression of unconditional love. Yes. Because they have that support and they have that water, right? So they just, they are able, they're capable of that. But so this, this uh -huh, go ahead. This, this is the kappa or kapha? How do you pronounce it? We call it kappa. Kappa. Yeah. Okay. H, but we call it kappa. Okay. Now, now, this force is the force that gathers energy, that stores the kappa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, in everything out in life, you see any expression of energy being gathered, like, for example, winter time, right? The snow yes. coming down us. Mm -hmm. the I'm watching it outside my window right now. It's quite lovely. So, oh, this, oh, is this is Kappa nature. Is that what I'm hearing? And it will ah. increase as winter increases, and it will peak right about the beginning of spring. Right. So yeah. what's so much fun about knowing these three body types or, or doshas is then um, clearly it's great to understand yourself, your own reasons why you eat, when you're eating and what's better for you. But then you can start identifying other people. And as you were describing that, I was remembering two specific kappa people who were in my life. One woman who was just the most loving, creative person on the planet. And she dealt with weight issues more so than anyone else I know. Sure. And, uh, you know, but by her understanding that she just typically or, or 
her dosha was kappa, that these were the challenges, it gave her more insight and almost a um, an, um, an acceptance of, okay, I might be a little bit rounder and that's okay. Because your structure is made yeah. out of more earth and water. So of course you're going to have thicker bones. Of course you're going to have yeah. thicker skin. Absolutely. But then in the understanding of that, then there's also the recognition Oh, the foods that I ought to be eating to to counter, to balance that are uh, lighter foods, you know, with a little bit more spices because I need more of the heat so that my digestion can function more optimally. But like you said, it gives you also an appreciation for how the other is not like you. And so in their psychology, right, they're not going to be going, yes, I want to go on that adventure with you. No, they're not interested in an adventure. They have more earth and water in them. They're going to think it all out. They're going to take their time. And then when they make the decision, guess what? They're going to make that come to fruition to the end as where someone with uh, with with a, 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 another dosha, let's say vata dosha, will be very excited in the beginning and then burn right. out halfway through. Right. So, so before we move on to the next, the vata and the pitta, which everyone you are going to definitely want to know about because you're going to want to know which you are, uh, why don't you tell us about, first of all, where are you from and how did you get inspired onto this path of, of teaching the world about Ayurveda? Thank you so much. Uh, I was born and raised in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And early, early on, I would, I would go to an orphanage as I was a little, little peanut. And that was because my mom worked there. But in that orphanage, I, I got to experience suffering through my, mm. whom I felt were my siblings. And I also got to experience the joy of relieving them from their suffering as I would perform from them for them in the center of the school with various costumes. I remember this one in particular was the big elephant. And, and I wanted more of that. I wanted to bring greater ease. But of course, I did not know how to do it in a sustainable way. So as from age five, I developed severe asthma. And really what would give me that next breath was that nebulizer with, with filled with steroids, you know, and, uh, and, and, I, and I had many other physical challenges as time went by, but I was still very committed. And my antennas were on all the time. Let me find this way to bring greater ease to the world let me find that it burned inside of me very strongly so strongly it did that I found myself in this country at age 17 on my own somehow I managed to put myself through school even after one year after college I had already bought my home so it's like I did all these things looking to find that that path to greater ease and just as i begin to ask a question there you do i i think i read that you have a degree in psychology i do so yeah. that was part of your path of how do you serve others I, it was my longing it was look i was looking for yeah. yes yes okay thank and you so then, the mind, understanding the mind is really you know it was my first step it was the first logical step to right to, to do it yeah yeah so, so, you know, years go by and, and you kind of, you somewhat forget, but then finally, when I did discover Ayurveda, it was, it was like the, it was that, that seed of common sense that had always been inside of me, always able to answer the questions to my big confusion moments began to to uh to be revealed yeah yeah beautiful so what took you from um rio de janeiro to california so initially my parents at age when i was 14 years old my folks came to us to los angeles to do 
uh, post PhD program. Oh wow! And two and three years later, when that ended, the whole family went back home. But I had just turned 17. I was just completing high school. I just was learning the language. And then I saw that as my opportunity to, to experience a bigger world, you know? And so that's, that's when I, I decided to, to stay and find my way. What a brave individual you are, Christiani. So it was a courageous act, yes, but it was the kind of courage that one needs, as you know very well, to find that that true inner calling. Beautiful. It's a, oh, that's it's a beautiful. Yeah. Oh, what an inspiration. Did you hear that? Be courageous to find your inner calling if you haven't already accessed it. Mm. Beautiful. All right, so we've got two more doshas. Let's hear what those are. So now we're at uh, Pitta, right? So the next one would be your a little bit of water, but mostly fire. Yeah. So now this, when this dosha is more, more prevalent in an individual, they're going to have clarity of mind. They're going to be able to gather groups and have them follow a path. They are the movers and the shakers. They are the CEOs. They, they have the vision and they know how to execute it. However, when when the fire goes into excess, which with a pitta, it's easy to do because, you know, once the engine is running, it's difficult to turn it off or slow it down, right? There's that, there's that tendency towards more, to overdo. Okay. And so when there's excess, then it will show up, like you mentioned, anger, um, uh, irritability, criticism mm -hmm. and in the body it will show up as all of your itises you know the ulcers and the and the inflammation it will also show up in the skin as rashes it will um it will have you know like the acid reflux like i mentioned in terms of of digestion but when the pitta knows how to 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 bring down that excess fire, then they can really make a huge contribution in the world because yeah. they, they have so right. much clarity and so much drive. Um, I recall that these doshas uh, are all, you, you can, without even knowing uh, too much about yourself, you can read some of the physical uh, aspects of one's nature. So for instance, um, what I remember about the Pitta is they're often uh, fair skin, freckled, the, they're the redheads, uh, they're slim in nature, uh, they like to be on the move all the time, and yes, very assertive, and uh, so even before becoming someone like a CEO, you have these natural traits, which helps you then to, to better define who you are and then say, oh, okay, well, if I'm naturally in this dosha, I do need to be more aware that I can fall, if I'm out of balance, I can fall into this, as you just described, uh, irritability, um, uh, heat, heated temper, that kind of thing. Right, right. Like how and do food, I- Food changes that, right? Food and environment. So we, we can- right? In Ayurveda, that's it. So then the answer is knowing who you are, what your dosha is. Well, oh, well, here's the answer. By knowing that you can know, and you mentioned this in the kapha, oh, well, you need to eat, or it's going to serve you if you eat these foods to counterbalance, mm -hmm. to be in this environment. So I really sometimes wonder if being in the snow and the cold is the best environment for me. <laughs> and we make the other changes that are within our reach. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not every is then we dress more warmly and we drink the warm teas and yeah. and we bring more oils into the body but like you said with with as where the kappa dosha is looking to eat a lighter food and a spicier food the pitta dosha can afford a heavier food because their metabolism runs very fast mm. it cannot afford is a very heating food 
because they already have a lot of heat in them. So things that have strong spices, right, that are heating in nature, like the jalapenos and so forth, they're going to cause more trouble. And that's the same with caffeine and alcohol, because those, those items will have, will, will heat up uh, the body as well, or bring more acidity to the body. So let's just say you really do like that cup of coffee and you're very much committed to it. That's okay for a pitta, as long as maybe they add a little bit of cardamom to it, whereas a spice that will give an antidote to all that acidity. You oh, know? Did you all hear that? Try yeah. it out, add cardamom to your coffee. I'm going to try that. Yes, you can you can ground it with the coffee itself or just add a little bit of the powder of the cardamom. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So so yeah, so so what Ayurveda does and what I'm 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 so deeply moved by it is that there are many gentle ways to bring into someone's lifestyle a, a, a tools that are more that are going to bring them closer to that balanced state yeah the health and the ease like, oh, no there's no there's no big no extreme what there is is being consistent mm -hmm. experiment with a few different tools and then you find the tools that work for you and then you stay with them beautiful so there's one more yep there's one more which is vata Vata, yeah. So before the, da, the vata, with the pitta, how, do you, how does pitta manifest in outside of you? The pitta is about that meta, metabolizing, transforming energy. So mm -hmm. as kapha stores energy, yeah. pitta metabolizes it. Okay. So then when we come to the vata individual you have more of your lighter elements. The vata is air and ether. And because of this combination, because they're lighter in nature, they're very creative. They, you know, if you need someone in your organization to, to see a problem that's not getting solved and and bring things outside the box, your Vata person is going to go there and it's going to know exactly what to do to, to create the change that's needed. You know, they, they, they can, they can see things from a, from a higher angle, from a higher uh, 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 place. Mm -hmm. And so they have a natural inclination towards being expressive and like I said, creative, artistic. The difficult thing for them is say when it comes nighttime and they need their rest because they don't have enough earth and water in them. The, that, 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 that natural inclination to get the rest that the body so much needs and that that active mind so much needs is is difficult to do similarly with meditation if they take on a meditative uh, uh practice they're going to have a challenge unless they maybe weigh down their legs with some weights and they put some oils in their bodies like in ayurveda we have these beautiful dinacharya routines Dinner mm -hmm. daily charya meaning routines where you are lubricating the body yeah. through the five senses and and also through 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 the skin and choose to be able to ground more so that the vata doesn't have to deal with those tendencies that are of their nature such as difficulty sleeping over thinking, uh, worrying too much or having, you know, uh, overwhelm things of, of that nature. And in um, so I have been the, uh, I fall into the Vata every time I've taken a test for the past 20 years, right? So I'm a Vata, but I followed closely, pretty closely with Kapha. So, uh -huh. um, and we just have a few minutes left, but balancing. So that means even though I may fall into the category of vata, which makes perfect sense, that kapha gives me enough earthiness to stay more 
um, grounded uh, because clearly I've been meditating my whole life. And so uh, I, it's just, I love the idea of having weight on your, on your legs to keep you grounded. Um, but what is um, in your mind, isn't there, are we ever all three or are we typically one or two? What you mostly see is a dual dosha. Two okay. doshas that are a little bit higher than the other, typically. But there are stridoshic folks out there as well, where most, where all three are pretty close, close together. Yeah, the key is to recognize which of the dosha is out of balance now at this time. Okay. Work from there. Okay. I Got am it. experiencing. Uh, constipation, let's say. At this time, I need to address that because a healthy poop every morning is very important for me. <laughs> so then what is that? What What is, what's going on there? There's dryness in the system. So it's okay. vata dosha. So I need moist foods. Also, spicy foods to to bring up the 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 the, the digestion or at least stabilize the digestion. Beautiful. And so, so you address it in that way. What's what's most asking for attention at this time, and then what are the antidotes to that which is in excess? Okay, that's terrific. Now. Um, thank you very much for sharing your wealth of knowledge. Uh, I have a couple of comments to make. One last question for you is, which dosha are you? So I'm a vata pitta. Okay. Yeah, Beautiful. those two very close. Yes. Very, yeah. very interesting. So in so, my practices, it's really about bringing more of the kappa qualities. In. Okay. Okay. So uh, you offer um, training in this classes on occasion, um, so uh, on Ayurveda, and you have a website, which is well-beingcompass.com, that's W-E-L-L-B-E-I-N-G-C-O-M-P-A-S-S.com, -S and you also have, for everyone, a free gift if you go to the website uh, backslash the dash five dash pranas. Uh, so that's a wonderful gift and we all appreciate it. You'll learn a lot more about uh, Ayurveda by visiting Christiane's website and signing up for any programs she's got coming up or um, yeah, any, any last things from you, um, Christiane? Okay. Thank you for having me, Alana, and thanks to all of you and best wishes in your, on your path to greater well-being. Yeah. Namaste, and may yeah. everyone uh, continue to create abundant health, wealth, and happiness in your lives. Thank you for listening to Creating Abundance. Be sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next podcast and get your free ebook at alanacahoon.com backslash ebook.